Hey Tech Lead here and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about how I lost $350,000 and it was actually even more than that and what that felt like in this coffee time. Now this is a story that I've never shared until now. Not because it's so deeply personal and painful but really because there's just never been any good opportunities at dinner time where I can just come up and say hey guys I lost $350,000. You know, it's just not good dinner table conversation material. One of the worst things about this loss, I would say, is that there's not much to learn from it. It was through stocks, day trading, and it's not like if I were to build a business, put a bunch of money into it, have a bunch of learnings, the business fails, I lose a bunch of money, but still I come out of that with a bunch of good lessons, some things I can write on my resume, some nice stories I can tell future employers. No, this was essentially skillless, right? I just went in there, Thought I could make some money, I didn't, don't really know why. Read a bunch of news, tried to figure out what was going on. I have a few theories here and there. This was especially painful to me because I had spent actually like a year trying to get good at day trading. I had learned all about technical analysis. I had been reading up on news, staying up to date with The Economist, reading that every week. And yet, I still managed to lose so much money that it just made me wonder like, what am I even doing here? This video, by the way, is sponsored by brilliant.org slash techlead. Check them out to learn some new skills. Want to learn something new on your commute while traveling or just without a constant stream of phone notifications? Brilliant's new offline courses will allow you to do just that. Download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science, and computer science, no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection. What's awesome about these courses is that they're all totally interactive. You'll experiment with pendulum clocks to master the physics of motion, use rockets to model algebraic functions, and learn probability by playing casino blackjack. Personally, I really like the courses in statistics and probability because all tech companies these days, they're very metrics based. They're always analyzing tons of data on experiments, metrics, analytics, and it's just a highly sought after skill for engineers to have some sense in analyzing statistics. So if you want to support Tech Lead and get unlimited access to all of Brilliant's in-depth math and science courses, head on over to brilliant.org slash tech lead and get 20% off your annual premium subscription. Check them out, brilliant.org slash tech lead. I can spend a whole month stressing out over stocks, checking every single price move, reading all the news, making a ton of different trades, or I can spend a whole month on a long-term buy and hold strategy and there's no telling which method is going to really come out ahead. So I'll keep the story short, but what happened was I had bought a bunch of commodities. You can see my tax return, I have bought some RJI, RJA, DBA, DBC, some precious metals like gold, silver. These are mostly stocks that represent underlying commodities. And commodities are like agriculture, grain, rice, corn, base raw materials, industrial metals, copper, things like that. And the reason I had bought a lot of this stuff was because commodities had had a good run up in the first half of 2014. And also because I felt that the dollar was weak and I just thought it was good diversification and I thought commodities were relatively stable perhaps because they represented real physical materials underneath. But what happened was that in the later half of 2014, commodities dropped 40%. And this was known as a commodity price shock of 2014. If you look it up, people don't really know what happened. According to Wikipedia, the commodity price shock cannot be attributed to any single factor or defining event. It was caused by a host of industry-specific macroeconomic and financial factors, which came together to cause this huge simultaneous large drop. And so despite all the news I was reading, the technical analysis that I was doing, messing around with Bollinger Bands, simple moving averages, Fibonacci lines, None of that really worked and I just lost my shirt in that whole game. And there would be days I would be losing 20, 30, $40,000 in a day. And meanwhile, my job was paying me like a few hundred bucks that day. And I think it was that around that time that I had been quitting a lot of my jobs because I just didn't see the meaning of that. And I really wanted to get more focused on day trading because I felt that that had more financial impact. But for me, despite how much I tried, I don't know if any of my efforts in stocks really had any impact, right? Some of it could have just been imaginary. Maybe I was making money just because I was lucky sometimes. But I think I can attribute my losses to a few factors and these may be good takeaways. One is that I had been new to the game and I felt a little overconfident and I was starting to make money right off the bat and I thought that this whole thing could continue. But you can only be lucky for so long. So during this time, I would do a lot of leveraged investing where I would take out loans from the brokerage 
at a lower interest rate and then I would invest that into the stock market believing that I could beat the interest rate at least. And for a while this actually worked out okay. To me the reasoning was that number one, I did not intend to buy a house, right? Most people, they'll go buy a house, that's like 30x leverage. And so I felt that if I was going to invest into the markets, I needed to also have some leverage so that I could keep pace with all the other people who may be buying homes. And you can see that based on this chart, you know, after I had had a good run up, it just started dropping. And it would just drop every single day and go down and down. And I kept believing that maybe it would go up. And it wasn't a steep drop, it was just a gradual decline, the type that really catches you by surprise over a long period of time. And you just keep thinking, well, maybe it's gonna go up, maybe it's just gonna go up starting now, maybe next week. It never really recovered after that. You can see that it just went down all the way, 40% drop, and it just kind of hovered down there. You know, I think that one problem for me was that I had also thought I was pretty clever. I started reading this site called Zero Hedge, which is popular among traders, but it's also very biased in the news, right? They would have all this doom and gloom sort of news where they would say that, you know, the US dollar is gonna tank, you have to buy commodities, you have to diversify your assets, gold and silver, they're gonna go up. And I actually believe some of this stuff. Every now and then you would find that some of their advice came in useful, but the timing is everything. In my head, I was so confident because I was only reading the news that I wanted to read. After this whole experience, I actually started putting more mainstream news like Yahoo Finance onto the bookmarks that I would check just because I wanted some more balance. By the end of the year, I logged in and came to the hard conclusion to just cut my losses. You know, I didn't believe in commodities or gold anymore at that point. I had seen that the S&P stocks were all going up or were at least neutral. And I felt that I had been jaded and brainwashed by the news sites that I had been reading. These days you also see that high frequency trading accounts for like 90% or more of daily stock trades. You know, you're not trading against normal people anymore. You're trading against robots. And what I realized in my trading was that as soon as news hit like CNN front page or Market Watch front page, it's already old news by then. All the trades have already been done by the robots who are trading at milliseconds of news simply using machine learning algorithms. No one's actually reading any of the news anymore, right? Which is silly because normal people like you and me, we're trying to read the news, we're trying to read that to try to understand what direction the stock's going to move, but machines aren't actually reading it and yet they're making 90% of the daily trades. I also realized that as an individual, I would be trading up against whole teams of people over at like say Goldman Sachs who are all focused on say the oil industry or all focused on tech or commodities or precious metals or whatever and they're sharing information and reports with each other and yet here I was a single person, I have no team, nobody's telling me if there's a macroeconomic move or if there's some other news on the other side of the world that may be affecting my trade in commodities. It's just way too much news for a single person to keep up on. So for me, one of my big takeaways from that experience where I lost a lot of money was, it doesn't matter if you're right. You know, maybe you'll read a bunch of news, maybe you'll get a hot tip, and yeah, maybe you're going to make some money there. But what really matters is your system. What is your system for limiting your losses, right? Because even if you trade successfully, 99% of the time, that 1% of the time can wipe you out. If you're highly leveraged in and you don't have proper stop losses in there, you don't have a way to limit your losses and just ride the trend line all the way down like I did. I wrote it down 40%. You know, I'm not sure if there's a really great system, right? Like for a while I thought, okay, everything needs to have stop losses, right? As soon as a stock drops 2%, I would just sell that and cut it off, but I would let it rise if it's at all possible, right? Trailing stop loss. You know, it's really hard to time that trailing stop level amount correctly because more often than not, your stop losses would just get hit and you just lock in losses everywhere you go. What I did after that was I looked into using algorithmic trading. So I use this platform, quantopian.com, which I'm not sponsored by, and there's a few other platforms like this where you can actually write Python scripts to do trading for you. And so I would try a few different algorithms. You know, I would trade based on earnings reports. And if the earnings report beat the forecast, then I would have the algorithm automatically buy that stock, hold it for three days, and then sell it. I also stopped shorting stocks, which I used to do a lot of, but I realized that the natural movement of the stocks is to go upwards. It's not like a stock has a 50-50 chance of going up or down. It actually has a higher chance, I would say, of going up. So using Quantopian, I was able to come up with an algorithm, backtest it against historical dates, see how the algorithm would have performed, and then I actually ran the algorithm and tried it out. And it made me like 2,000 bucks here and there. It wasn't much though. 
And what happened is it would actually generate a bunch of fees and brokerages. I eventually just stopped that and decided that I'm gonna go towards more asset allocation. So I might say I want 10% gold, 20% bonds, 20% commodities, 20% tech stocks or something like that. The analogy I like to think about is imagine if I were just like a sailor, right? Without any country and I'm going around doing work and wherever I go, people pay me. So I might go somewhere and someone just says they don't really have any US dollars, but they have a bunch of corn. So they pay me corn or someone else may come and say they only have Microsoft stock. They pay me some Microsoft stock. Someone else may have only Japanese yen. Some people have oil. Some people have only bonds. So that's really the theory behind the asset allocation. You know, it's just like, well, what type of currency would you like to accept and keep your assets held in? So let's talk about what this felt like to me. And I often equate it in my mind to losing a Lamborghini. And you know, maybe that's why I don't drive a Lamborghini because in my mind, I've already lost one. And other than that, it sent me back a number of years in terms of income. And I can imagine that, you know, if I was the type of person to be struggling really hard every single year in a job that I hated, then it would totally not be worth it, right? I would feel pretty bad. I would feel despair that I had just given up years of my life for this and struggled and it was painful and I thought I would get money, but then I just lost it all in the blink of an eye. Then I would have to redo all of that all over again. But it's not really quite like that for me because I've been enjoying life as it came. And especially after this experience, it made me realize that money can be gained and money can be lost and to never really just focus only on that aspect, right? If you're picking up a job, it should be, I think, for like lifestyle, right? Don't bet on being able to keep that money forever because you might just lose it. You might lose it in a number of ways and to make sure that you're having a good time, having fun as you're earning that because that's going to end up being your life as well. It's not just simply a trade of your time, your effort for money. You're giving away your lifestyle as well, which is kind of why I enjoy personally working in really nice companies, right? Like nice offices. That's one of the top things I actually look for when I apply for jobs. I look for just a good, clean, comfortable working environment, you know? Personally, for me, I would not be working in an office like a really crummy, hot, stuffy startup environment in which people treat me like garbage. I would not do something like that because it's not worth it, even if there's money to be made because money can be lost as well. And actually, the sort of experience would happen over and over for me. You know, I'm not sure if I learned anything from it because even after that, I continue to lose money in the stock market even today. So these days I tend to stay away from playing too many games with the stock market and then spend my efforts on other more interesting, more fulfilling things that, you know, I can actually build skills from, learn from. So that'll do it for me. Let me know what your investment strategy is. If you like the video, give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.